Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the GOTO 12.5 centimeter reflector. This is a Newtonian reflector that came out in about 1985 or so. And it's on the very, very significant Mark X mount. That's a very big deal. Um, now GOTO was renowned for having made wonderful telescopes of all kinds. This ranks right up there with them. It's a Newtonian. Most people look uh, down on a Newtonian, but they are wonderful scopes. Five inches in aperture. This is an F8. This will deliver an image that's approximately equivalent to a four inch apple. So it's a good quality telescope. And the mount is something to behold. Wait until you see. This is the GOTO Comet Tracker. Anyway, the idea here was that you could, you know, this is a, a, a guiding system. You've got two plugs here. You've got two plugs here that go into motors, and the motors go onto the mount, of course. And then you can use all this stuff here to figure out the, the proper rate to track things. Um, first thing you need to do is uh, go to the university, get a PhD in astrophysics. And then you should be able to maybe with some work figure out how to how to set this, how to operate this. It's non-trivial. Actually, it's, <laughs> it's not complicated at all. You got fast and uh, stop, fast and stop, and right ascension and declination. So it's really not that complicated. This stuff here, I think, is just to very, very finely tune the rate, although I don't uh, honestly think that's really ever necessary on this side scope anyway. So let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> Here's one of the clock drive motors and they're both identical. You've got one for right ascension and one for declination. Um, Don is lucky enough to have a whole set. Uh, it's kind of amazing. Anyhow, this thing plugs in like so. And then this somehow has to mount to that or to that. How does that work? Well, Goto in their infinite wisdom has put uh, a device on here that helps to keep things aligned. So this goes on to the actual crank, like so. And you tighten this down. Let's turn it around so we can get on there. Now put that on, tighten it down. Oh, and we have to line this little notch, that's a little horseshoe-shaped notch, goes around this thing. And that keeps the motor from rotating one way or the other when you operate it. So you line that up, get those put on there, and you're all set. You have to tighten that down. Plug in your Comet Tracker, and you're good to go. This is for declination. A similar thing for right ascension. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll pull off the slow motion. Show you what it looks like on this side over here. So here's where the motor goes on this side. You have to line that up. Get that thing lined up. Put that on there and let's see if you can see that on camera. Anyhow, this thing just has to line up properly. 
get this loosened up, get that at the right angle so that the lock screw will line up. This is so well machined. It's just, uh, well, those of you that know Goto know how well these things are made. These are just really, really fine pieces of machinery. So there we are. Now all we have to do is arrange to get it get that tightened down. So anyhow, once we get that tightened down, now I've got motors on both right ascension and declination. What a deal, huh? Plug in my tracker and I'm good to go. This little device is a poor man's clock drive, a manual clock drive, if you will. This is just a speed reducer. You turn this at a certain rate, and this is uh, turning at about one-tenth or so of the rate that you put it in, input here. So you can use this on either declination to help with guiding, uh, if you've got a clock drive on the right ascension, or if you have neither, you can use this as a substitute. All you have to do is uh, put this on, it's exactly like a motor. You have to line up the little things and, oops, get the little horseshoe on there. Let me turn that around so you can see. Let's see how it's mounted on there. So once you've got that on there, tightened up at all, all good, you can then use um, just a knob like so. You can use that knob to turn the right ascension, or you can, of course, it, it will fit with the slow motion rod. I don't have it tight, so that's why it's wiggling there. Um, and then you would get the very, very slow, slow motion. Let me tighten this down and see if I can show that to you. Okay, so now I have this device on here. I'm just gonna use the knob for convenience. So I turn this, you probably can't see much motion. Let me see if I can turn it real fast. Now you can probably see some motion in the right ascension axis. It's not much though, it's highly reduced. So this thing makes almost like um, clock drive motion possible. But you have to have everything nice and stable. If you've got a camera attached to this thing, Anytime you touch a telescope with a camera on it, you know, you're introducing some possible shake. So you'd have to be very, very, very careful with that. Clever device though. Here I have the Goto 12.5 centimeter, five inch reflector. It's a five inch F8. Next to a carton CST, this is a four inch F6. So it's quite a bit smaller telescope, but uh, we're not interested too much in those differences. This is obviously going to perform better. It's a longer focal ratio, bigger aperture. This is going to be a, a give you better images. Uh, but Carton had comparable scopes that would go on the same mount. What we're interested in here is the mounts, the difference between the mounts. A couple of surprising differences. Well, let's talk about similarities first. First of all, they're both modular. They're both blue. Um, Hmm, which one came first? The Goto came first. Which one is the imitator? The carton is clearly the imitator. They're modular. This one is, uh, the carton is a little bit bigger, but they're basically the same construction. They're both nice, robust, heavy duty mounts. This one has a kind of a funky locking mechanism. This one has a very traditional kind of locking mechanism. Um, everything is, First caliber, very, very good quality on both scopes.
I hope you enjoyed this look at the Goto Kogaku 12.5 centimeter reflector from the mid 1980s. Thank you for watching.